Excuse us. Pardon me, ma'am. Sorry, sorry. Move it, asshole. Oh, thank God. We got good seats. Damn right we did. What's up? We got the drink. We got the popcorn. And the candy. I think we're ready, man. Hey, guys. Sorry I'm late. The bathroom here is nuts. Oh, my God. You made it. Yay. It's about time, Nathan. Damn. Shh. The movie's starting. Welcome to the Silver Linings Playlist. Over the next hour or so, you will hear opinions, facts, dick jokes, <laughs> and at time, entire monologues about Nathan's terrible childhood. <laughs> Please, do not just listen to this episode. Hear, absorb, <laughs> consider every terrible pun that enters your ears. <laughs> Be mindful, but do not just listen. Our show is much too precious for that. Accept all of it and forgive. And on that note, I'm Mally Moore. <laughs> I'm Remy the Rat, <laughs> and uh, I'm a name-dropping whore, and this is the Silver Linings Playlist, the most offensive assault on the human eardrum ever contrived. Uh, it's true. Yeah. <laughs> Can I just say my alternate idea for an intro? Oh, of course, of course. It was going to be, take that, rewind it back, Ray Fine's got the meals, make your booty go. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You know what? Yeah! <laughs> is it the quickest I've gotten the applause? That might be a record. That might be a record for everybody, honestly. Fantastic. All right. You should have you should have saved that for the very end. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Well, welcome everyone. Uh thank you for joining us on this fine evening in this fine establishment. Mm -hmm. Uh Chef Mally has put together a fine uh concoction here. Uh, mm -hmm. I got a pocket, got a pocket full of hawthorns. <laughs> I got a pocket, got a pocket full of hawthorns. My favorite method for concealing my penis. <laughs> We, we have a, a full course menu for you this evening. Uh, of course, we're going to talk about the movie, the menu. Mm -hmm. We're going to give some prop cops, some bit parts. We're going to do the whole the whole thing. And it's all been carefully... We're going to do the show that we typically do. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, all, it's all been carefully constructed to tell the full story mm -hmm. of this movie. I binge watched so many old seasons of master chef yeah. uh -huh. to prep for this episode oh, wow fantastic. did you actually watch the movie because that would be the ultimate prep for, the, for this week oh man i knew there was something oh, oh fuck <laughs> mally oh, oh no. no i did i did already decide i'm i'm eating cheeseburgers for dinner tonight oh, so yeah, that, that that counts good call i had one today and great choice Oof. yeah how was the mouth feel <laughs> oh you know it was good mm. cheesy greasy easy <laughs> it always is with you nathan <laughs> put that on your fucking tombstone <laughs> well chef mally this is uh your final pick for the season right. uh, is there any particular reason why the menu stuck out to you in particular to be the uh the final the final call for you I mean, clearly there was definitely a reason because I replaced another movie mm -hmm. that I originally, I don't remember what it was, but I replaced it with this one, like the night I saw this movie. Because mm -hmm. I was like, oh, this like th this is going to be so much fun to talk about. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. The mouthfeel of this movie, guys. Uh -huh. I mean. <laughs> that is one of the worst words we've created as a society, right? <laughs> uh -huh. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Speaking of worst, God, that fucking character. We'll mm -hmm. get to it. Jesus <laughs> Very few likable characters in this movie i will mm -hmm. say just the worst kind of people well, the worst this was my my first time seeing this movie i put it off watching it because i knew we were going to do it for the show uh -huh. and i had a good time yeah i see what all the hype was about mm -hmm. it's definitely an interesting movie it's something i haven't seen before really mm -hmm. nathan you were telling me off air that this movie is a remake of another movie and you were <laughs> excited to tell us what that movie is i'm curious to know what you think oh i just you know i i love so i i really dug this movie this was my second watch mm -hmm. i mean it t it's hell's kitchen it's yeah. Hell's Kitchen, <laughs> which I've also watched quite a bit of. Mm -hmm. um, but I would say this is a movie that improves on repeat viewings mm -hmm. because you're picking up interesting uh, double meanings and dialogue sure. and, and, and just glances and, and different establishing shots. But that being said, it is what it still blows my mind that this movie has the same ending as Ratatouille. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> Like he the the cheeseburger moment might as well be the food critic mm -hmm. biting into the ratatouille. Yeah. And I I love it so much. Yeah. I uh I was kind of startled by how similar this movie was to another movie from last year, Glass Onion, uh -huh. with uh, a psycho bringing a bunch of people to an island and then that island blowing up. Sure. Just the worst people, too, getting yeah. caught in the crosshair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Technically, this movie did it first. Yeah, yeah. That's true, yeah. M got there before Bond did. 
<laughs> it also it this movie does piss me off a little bit just because I know it was shot in Savannah, Georgia. Oh, yeah. Right? Mostly on Jekyll Island. Yeah. And Jekyll Island pisses me off because I had an old boss who was the worst boss I've ever had that constantly fucking talked about his house on fucking Jekyll Island. <laughs> <laughs> that's it's not anything really to brag about, I don't think. Well, that's your fault for working for Mr. Hyde. So <laughs> That should have been a dead giveaway. <laughs> That's on me. I'll tell you what pissed me off. Watching this movie on HBO Max, because I don't know if you guys had the same experience. My image was fucked watching huh. this on HBO. No issues. Real Okay. Everything was stretched inward. And when I fixed the aspect ratio on my TV to make it fit, uh-huh. the on-screen text where it tells you all the different ingredients of the mills was pushed Were off like screen. Off? Yeah. Oh, weird. I did not have that issue. I had, uh, I had some weird connection issues, but that's about it. Mm. Yeah. N- no issue whatsoever. Get your shit together. HBO. I know you're failing as a streaming service, but get your I shit mean, together. granted, yes, that th- it is the worst like functioning app, right? Like, yep. it, like Tubi has a better interface than HBO Max. Well, that's because Tubi is the rating king of streaming services. Tubi the god. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Man, I don't know. Y'all remember the old Prime interface? Hmm. I don't know if I can recall the old Prime interface. I think I might just be accustomed to the new one now. I don't really, really recall. It was the worst shit on the planet. Really? I think Hulu is probably the worst, even with their uh, upgrade it's still terrible Hulu is bad. see hulu hulu doesn't you know reach out of the screen and say hey fuck you when i try to rewind something that's true <laughs> like, hbo that's true. max is like you want to move 10 seconds are you insane that's true at hbo if you're if you're trying to go to the series of a show i don't know why it decides oh you want to start playing the episode net right now okay yes. good luck mm-hmm. that's the worst I don't know. I I I hope that streaming service fails because this, <laughs> this this was this was a terrible viewing experience for our first time. But I I got it. I got it. Everybody, don't worry. And also, like, why are all these kids on our lawn? Yeah, <laughs> I'm I'm chalking I'm I'm chalking it up to fucking user error. Bro. Okay, mm-hmm. okay. <laughs> Nothing else about uh, every other like I watched the session on there. No problem. Did you do that? Because th- you, you can select everything by the Snyder cut ratio now. Oh, so like fuck. I think that's, what, that's you, what you, you selected the Snyder cut of the menu. The, God damn it, Snyder. Why are you just invading everything? <laughs> oh, it was it was seven hours long and had Steppenwolf in it. Yeah, you know this movie wasn't in black and white originally, right? Yeah, you watched the menu cheeseburger is gray edition. The, the menu is gray. <laughs> the menu is gray. Speaking of Secession, though, I noticed the director of this movie when I when his name popped up because as someone who just started watching Mark Secession, Milo, yep. yeah, that's he's a big name over there mm-hmm. and Game of Thrones. True, true. This was a very like. Because I read that this movie was, was you know, it had been in development for a while, and there yeah. were some other people attached to it. Mm-hmm. And yeah, this this turned out really well, I think. I think it came out at the right time. Mm-hmm. I think somehow I'm still not tired of Anya Taylor-Joy. Sure. Oh, actually, I have a correction. It's pronounced Anya Taylor-Joy. I've been corrected mm-hmm. by uh, the actress herself. I keep wanting to say Anya, but it is not. It is Anya. So. Wait, she she corrected you in person? Yeah, she stepped in right now. She just smacked me in the mouth. Oh, I was like, I was like, I thought, did, I was like, did a fucking producer just whisper in your ear? Yeah. Do we have a producer I don't know about? Yeah, no, no, no I, because I, I just remembered. I, it's like Pavlov's bell now. When I hear myself say it, I'm like, nope, that's wrong. I got to say it the right way now. Do we have a guy in a chair? I like, wish. We got a fucking oracle over there. Like, what's I up? I fucking wish. Yeah. God, yeah. Man in the booth. Yeah. I pff- it, apply for the job, anybody. <laughs> we will not pay you. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. Yeah, Anya Taylor-Joy, very good in this movie. I enjoy her quite a bit. I, I have some issues with her character, sure. which we will get to for sure. Sure. But uh, yeah, I, 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 this cast is just fucking top notch. <laughs> Let the misogyny begin. <laughs> oh, no, it's not misogyny at all. No, uh, I, I have weird issues with reactions from characters on this movie. <laughs> sure, that's sure. fair, that's fair. Well, before we get into it, why don't we run it back and talk about uh, the production, the release, all that good stuff about the menu. Mm-hmm. Run it back. Da menu. Da menu. Spike Jones is da menu. <laughs> <laughs> Spike Jones? Oh, yeah, Spike Lee. God damn it. I do that all the time. I do that all the time. <laughs> Apologies, Mr. Lee and Mr. Jones. Man, imagine if Spike Lee directed Where the Wild Things Are. <laughs> oh, better movie, probably. Yeah. You know, right now. Undoubtedly. Where the Wild Things Are. <laughs> or what about uh, Spike Jones directing The Five Bloods? I think that would be a fun movie. There you go. 
Uh, so the year is last year, as we mentioned, 2022. The director is, of course, Mark Mylod. Mm-hmm. The movie stars Ray Fiennes, Anya Taylor-Joy, Nicholas Holt, Hong Chow, Janik Mateer, Judith Light, Johnny Legs, yes. Rob Yang, Mark St. Cyr, Reed Burney, Amy Carrero, and Arturo Castro. Yes. The budget was $35 million. It managed to grow $79 million worldwide and currently sits at an 88% on Rotten Tomatoes. hmm Dude, who's the who's the woman that plays the uh, like sous chef? That's Hong Chao. Is that not right? Okay, am, am I wrong about that? Uh, I have no idea what her name is. Catherine, who who stabs him? Or no, 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 no. Um, his assistant. Yeah, 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 Elsa, Elsa, Hong Chao. Like she's yeah. like the main sous chef. Yeah, Hong Chao. That's Elsa. Dude, she's so good. Yeah, yeah. she's great. She's really good. She's great in a uh, Watchmen as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, also, speaking of succession, Rob Yang, yeah. who plays uh, Lawrence over on that show, is really good. Oh, yeah. And Nicholas Holt, I feel like I haven't seen him in quite some time. I know he's on that show, The Great, mm-hmm. but I couldn't recall like the last big thing he's done other than those X-Men movies. Uh, the favorite. Oh, yeah. that's true. That's true. And then uh, he had Tolkien a couple of years ago, oh, which right. like, kind of came and went. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Dude, Janet McTeer, mm-hmm. always crushing it. She's so great in this. I think Paul Adelstein might be like the secret MVP of this movie. I don't oh. know. Like his... His sort of like, you know, uh, just just sort of sucking up constantly brown nosing, but mm-hmm. like in a way that makes him seem elevated at the same time. I think it's like a quietly very funny performance. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I haven't seen the trailer for this movie because I specifically avoided it since I, it was getting such rave reviews and I knew we were doing it on the show. So sure. this will be a first time watch for me. It's a great trailer. I like I remember seeing this ahead of... Um, Barbarian and oh. just being like, oh, I, I think I would rather be watching that tonight. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I, I'm going to make a guess. This trailer is very uh, heavy on the cuts to match with the claps mm. and the sound design of the kitchen, if I had to make a guess. We will shall see, I suppose. All right, let's find out. Fine. <laughs> is that going to fit everyone? Yeah, easily. 12 customers total. How do they turn a profit? 12.50 ahead, that's how. What are we eating? Does 1250 seem too cheap for this? Yes. yes. Okay. I, I actually thought that. <laughs> okay, just making sure. I mean, I know it's a lot for food, but. You have to try the mouse feel with the minionette. Please don't say mouthful. <laughs> Tonight will be madness. Welcome. We'll endeavor to make your evening as pleasant as possible. Welcome to Hawthorne. Here we are family. Yes, sir! We I didn't realize we were going to Olive Garden. <laughs> we gel. Yeah. We gel. We gel. He's not just a chef, he's a storyteller. The game is trying to guess what the overarching theme of the entire meal is going to be. You won't know till the end. Who are you? I am Margo. Why do you care? I have to know if you're with us or with them. What a Franken edit on that line. Ooh. Yeah, right. It's pictures, they're of us. This guest list. How do they get these? It's not good. This entire evening. Jesus Christ. This is just theater. It's stagecraft. We're leaving now. It has been painstakingly planned. This is real, isn't it? What the hell is going on? We now offer you a 45 second head start. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 45 Good bit. starts now. This is what you're paying for. Get out of my way. It's all part of the menu. It's okay. No, we're gonna die today. Yes, we are. Yeah. <laughs> Told him it was my birthday. Seemed funny about three hours ago. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, Adam McKay produced this. Yeah. That makes sense. And Will Ferrell before their uh, partnership dissolved. That's oh, right. That happened. I didn't know that. Yeah. All right. So I'm curious to see if which one of their names is attached to Succession season four. Ooh. Anyway, I feel like both still have to be right, like legally. Not necessarily. All right. Can we talk about the opening shot of this movie? The stock footage shot? And how it's stock footage. Yes. <laughs> I saw I saw that on Twitter recently. Genius. Kind of blew my mind. Whoever said that, though, that was like, you'd be surprised how much stock footage is in movies is absolutely right. Oh, sure. As someone who works in the trailer biz, mm-hmm. it happens all the time. So much. <laughs> stock footage everywhere. Yes. But I mean, why not? Well, I mean, e- even before that, just all of the, like, invites you to experience the oh, movie. Oh, that was like, the, nice. Even, yeah. Even the, the opening credits are part of the the gag yeah. and i love that no it's i 
Something about uh, the graphic work in this movie, the copy, the text, everything, uh-huh. it's really elegant. Mm-hmm. And I guess I should get this out of the way now. As I, I don't know a goddamn thing about fine dining. And what? <laughs> one of my questions was, have either of you guys ever been to like one of these like fancy fucking things? Nothing no. like this mm-hmm. where it's like an experience. Yeah, not like not like a thing where like you pay in advance, you, you, you're you doing, uh, what's it called? <laughs> Dustin never pays for a meal. <laughs> nope, nope. What's it called though? Where there's different, uh, you do one plate then the next. You know, I've never done anything like that. A meal. Yeah, a meal. You're right. That's what I was looking for. <laughs> a, a meal. <laughs> no, I haven't. Uh, I usually eat out of the garbage in the back. Uh, but no. Yeah, you're 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 the resident raccoon. That's uh-huh. true. And I, I've watched every episode of Hell's Kitchen. I don't know. I still don't know a fucking thing about I don't even know what Beef Wellington is. I, I don't know. I was Jesus literally Christ. about to say, it was like, I watched like six seasons before I looked up how to make a Beef Wellington. And I was like, oh, that's what that is? I, I and For me, it looks like you just shove a piece of steak inside a piece of bread. I have no fucking clue. <laughs> so. So when you watch Fine Dining, you're like me watching card games yeah, and movies. I don't understand. And, I'm, <laughs> I, and I'm still over there like swirling my wine in my glass being like, I can't believe this idiot's going to make a reduction for this right now. But sure, I still don't sure know off. what that means. I still don't know what that means. You've, only, you've got 10 minutes left and you're using the ice cream maker, you fucking fool. You're, you're trying to make fresh pasta for chef and you only got 20 minutes, you fucking idiot. <laughs> for chef. I just don't. I don't. I don't know. Yeah. I don't, I don't get it. So most of this stuff in this movie, you're just sitting here. You're sitting here watching, just like, what the fuck is a scallop? Right? <laughs> I'm like, this word I've never heard before. But no, I had scallops for dinner last night. Mm. Get fucked, you pores. <laughs> <laughs> Anya Taylor George or Anya Taylor George, God damn it, is a great audience surrogate oh, because. Yeah. The whole time, she's like, no, I just prefer the oysters. I don't need the little lemon balls or whatever that's in there. Right. And we got to talk about him right up front. Tyler may be the worst character in any movie we've ever done. Yes. Uh, Literally the fucking worst. He's the worst, and he's so proud of himself mm-hmm. like that the the there is a smarm that is off the charts from like moment one with this performance wait wait, pa- wait pause pot smarm smarmy yeah. he's a smarmy man it's a word this is a new one this oh. is like when dc found out about scallops yeah i <laughs> think that happened 10 seconds ago yeah, yeah. <laughs> is that like smizing <laughs> it's like when yeah sort of i mean it's like when you're trying to like suck up to somebody but it's like in a way that's so over the top that it's insincere it's Crowd nosing. Yeah. And so yeah. he's like, he's got this vibe where he's just like, oh, classic, a power tasting. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> tonight will be madness. But my, my first note was it's interesting to see a movie where Nicholas Holt isn't playing just some weird little guy. Like, oh, I just, he's, he is fully a weird little guy in this no, movie. No, he's still an asshole, <laughs> uh-huh. but I'm just like, I don't know, I haven't seen him just. With under, under layers of makeup and stuff in quite a while, you know what I mean? Sure. And my second note is, of course, he's mansplaining to her about how to taste food properly. Uh-huh. Like, get fucked, buddy. Right. Get fucked. Yeah. Well, and and this is what I mean about a second watch, like, illuminating different things. Her her reference to, like, it's all on your dime, uh-huh. you're paying, like, all of that is really... Cle- and him straight up saying, like, no girl like you would ever go out with me before. That's true. <laughs> okay. Know, like, so, let's say this. If, if you haven't seen the menu, I recommend you stop now and go see it yes. but if you're going to power through it anyway mm-hmm. we can go ahead and set the table now hey uh, you there like you that go one? yeah so <laughs> tyler nicholas holt's character has hired anya taylor joy who is a call girl uh-huh. uh she's not a call girl she's a high-end escort true true i'm s- very sorry Jesus. but uh he's bringing her because his girlfriend broke up with him right just before coming here and uh we find out later on that Tyler has been communicating with Chef uh-huh. for months prior and knew exactly what was going to happen at this dinner. Right. And still decided to bring uh, Anya Taylor Joy here. Because the reservation was for two, and yes. otherwise he wouldn't have been allowed on. Yes, mm-hmm. exactly. Which brings into question why does he take so many photos if he knows what's going to happen? Because he, j- he just can't fucking help himself. Yeah, okay. Exactly. Yeah, I buy yeah. that. Totally. He's that fucking delusional. I buy that. I think there's also a second part to that, which is, and this is a, actually a good time to bring this up i i found on uh on a discussion for this movie on reddit someone who tied this up perfectly okay tyler thinks he's the exception to the rule yep. sure i don't think tyler going there thinks that he's gonna be killed like everyone else because him and chef have a bond as in the way he thinks they do they do anyway you know what i mean well he's a habitual line stepper right like yes. he's going he's going up to the kitchen asking them oh you're using a paco jet such oh can i asshole. touch the meat can i do this can i take these photos yeah such an ass he's he's the ultimate taker yeah 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And this will tie in perfectly with, which I'm sure will be at least a question later on, but the thing that Chef whispers into his ear, right? Mm-hmm. I think there's two sides you can take to it. And this is where I'll bring in this comment that I found. But okay. I initially went with, oh, he must have just insulted him so hard that he went and hung himself. Oh, I, I think he literally says, go into the back room and hang yourself. That's possible. <laughs> I, think, yeah. I think that is straight up what he says. I agree. Or he says, Scarlett Johansson, I enjoyed our time in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to hear what you guys think about this because I found this comment on Reddit. Okay. This is from user mischief of rats okay. and, and we know if you found it on reddit it has to be true yeah mm-hmm. well this is opinion based <laughs> there's no terrible opinions on that website and, and this comment was written by a guy who has a rat under his hat <laughs> controlling him on the keyboard oh my no it, well it's a raccoon oh, you see that's a common mistake okay. everyone thinks it's a rat but it's a raccoon remy the raccoon mm-hmm my take is a little sideways. I think that Tyler thought he was the exception to the rule. I really don't think he thought he'd die. He thought everyone else would, but not him. He thought he was special. He cozied up to the kitchen staff because he thought obsession earned him that privilege. Mm-hmm. He took pictures of the meal for later, even though he was told not to because he thought he could get away with it, mm-hmm. implying that he thought there would be a later for him where he could share these, which is why they were printed on the tortillas, because it's pointing out his sins, just like everyone else, his entitlement. Sure. He didn't initially run on the manhunt with the other men because he, he wasn't actually taking the threat seriously. No, he's he's like looking through the window instead. Yeah, yeah. He came back in and immediately uh, grabbed up the leftover food because he still didn't think that what was happening to everyone else was about to happen to him. Right. And then it said, my read is that Tyler thought Chef would recognize his virtue as a quote unquote true fan. Sure. The correct appreciation appreciative audience for his art and would spare him he's an obsessive entitled fan boy who thinks his slavish devotion and dedication earns him something from chef because he thinks his version of taking consumption eating is something chef appreciates i could buy that my 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 one caveat to that would be uh chef said everyone's dying tonight including the staff right well of course the next comment on this thread is actually perfect because Mm. this is exactly the perfect representation of like an elon bro (laughs) (laughs) you're doing it man yeah it's someone who just cozies up to him and thinks they'll be the exception but Mm -hmm. i mean i don't maybe elon's plan is to kill everybody on twitter i don't know maybe he's doing a kingsman the secret service (laughs) plot who knows but uh for for legal reasons that's an absolute joke yes uh, yeah mr elon please mr musk (laughs) i gave you all the clues Uh, (laughs) i I think that's the perfect representation of tyler like he he thinks no matter what he's the exception because he's doing it quote unquote the right way yeah no he he can't help but to feel entitled because he's never no one's ever told him otherwise it seems right but uh, my theory is, is to go along with that is I don't think Chef insulted him in his ear. I don't think he told him to go in there and kill yourself. Mm. I think he, t- he he something along the lines is what kind of what he's trying You're to. You're not special. Basically. And you don't belong here. Kind of what he's trying to tell uh, uh, Anya Taylor-Joy the whole movie. Right. Which is I'm trying to figure out where you fit in. And he basically tells Tyler, you don't fit in. Like, you don't belong here. You're not special. And that leads him to suicide because his hero who he thought would, he would be exempt from, right. basically just shut down his dreams. And the whole movie, he's like, everyone hated me. I'd never had friends in school. Sure. Girls like you wouldn't look at me. So like, this was all he had. Oh, and yeah. now it's gone. So Is it possible that Chef whispered a vodka Kedavra oh, and it just took God. a second to work? That is the obvious. I mean, maybe we could do like uh, Reservoir Dogs where you crank up the audio. You can hear Mr. Pink outside. Maybe we could hear that here. <laughs> sure. Mm. Yeah. I like that. That's good. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Just whispers in his ear. It's a fairy tale fucking town. <laughs> <laughs> so the first little clue here that something is not right uh-huh. is these living quarters yes. that everyone's living in. Like this is straight up telling you. Which look like barracks. Yeah. I mean, that's some Jonestown shit. Yes. Jonestown Heaven Gate shit. Like, I don't know how I didn't put it together early on. That Because th- I guess going to this movie, I didn't have expectations. Sure. I thought maybe this would turn out to be like a cannibal movie or too. something like yeah. that. You know, uh, mm-hmm. I mean, the... The big giveaway is the goat. That's, that's true. Them. The goat's going to the slaughter. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that's the same kind of goat that they use for cattle. Mm-hmm. What they, they call that a Judas goat, yes. right? Yep. Something like yep. that. Yep. Which is like the most. How is there not a band called Judas Goat? First of all, <laughs> uh, and they tour with Judas Priest. Yeah. <laughs> we starting it right now, baby. <laughs> oh, I like that. It's bluegrass metal. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, I would. I fuck with that. I think that's just Maylene in the Sons of Disaster. <laughs> Where's my fucking banjo? So yeah, they've got these like barracks with open toilets. Ugh. They get three to four hours of sleep at best. (laughs) There it is. There it is. Hell yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. Continue, Dave. (laughs) But I, I, and also like, I, I love the, the music when they arrive on the island is just so like, 
beautiful yes. and, and and it gets more discordant as it goes on and things get more fucked up like, so i i took note of that because the music as you mentioned gets darker as it goes on yeah. and it starts towards the end to give real midsummer vibes yeah. a little bit and then i looked up the composer and while they did not do midsummer they did do hereditary i'm oh. like oh that makes sense okay i get it now. yeah that totally makes sense yeah and he's done music with uh what's this guy's name colin stetson mm-hmm. he's also done music with uh tom waits mm. and lou reed so so like yeah it, it, that's exactly the vibe that they're going for um but but oh they should have got tom waits to score this movie <laughs> uh-huh. welcome to the restaurant <laughs> but no it, it like loops back around to being like joyous and 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 beautiful again yeah. when everyone's dying like yeah. it's like this is the the great moment we've been waiting for <laughs> yeah i mean mally you you missed a chance to t- say the real reason you picked this movie it's a fucking cult movie it oh is it is 100 percent. he's a cult it was implied, was it not? <laughs> no, I, guess, I guess so. Nathan, uh-huh. when we when we go to record the uh, the uh, Judas Goat EP, <laughs> sure. I'm going to need you to do that Tom Waits voice. <laughs> <laughs> Where the earth died screaming. <laughs> I do like that they're at least telling me what's included in each of these plates as they do each new one. Yes. I think that's a great touch because, you know, my Doritos eating ass does not appreciate fine dining enough to know what these things are. <laughs> and yeah. I, I don't know. I, we talked about this during the trailer, but uh-huh. I still think $1,200 is too cheap for this somehow. Oh, that's insanely cheap. Yeah. Too cheap for this. You're chartering a, a cruise. You are. You get a full tour of the island. Uh, you're there for like six hours for essentially dinner and a show. Yeah. I mean, I don't even think it would... It's got to cost more than that just to eat at Hell's Kitchen, right? Like, uh, well, uh, Hell's Kitchen, from my understanding, you can't, you can't actually eat at... Okay. It's like... It's by invitation only too, right? If invitation only and usually it's producers or like like friends of the show gotcha. things like that that's my understanding from looking it up because i've tried <laughs> to find out how i can eat there and yeah. sure uh, we'll get there man well thank you so much but the whole point really is that like the money doesn't matter right because everyone's gonna be dead at the end of this thing right uh, that's actually one of my notes is do they still charge the cards because <laughs> they give them all bills that's, that's true, right. that's true. Yes. i mean there's like what maybe 10 to 15 people here so you're may- only making like 10 grand, 15 grand, somewhere uh-huh. in between there. That that won't even pay for the ferry probably to get everyone there. Right. Back, right. So I don't know. I guess the money's not important, but maybe that's the first like thing to tip you off that maybe this isn't right because uh-huh. it is expensive for a meal. But like if you're, this is like the world's top chef, you go into a private dinner. Right. Yeah. I don't know. Well, and the, the implication is that like he, I mean, he said it's not an implication. He says it straight up. He's yeah. like, I have refined my art to the point where the only people who can afford it are the ones who don't really care. I have refined my work. <laughs> <laughs> come on come on you know what no nope nope you know what yourself. i'm doing it there you go all right there we go <laughs> i said at the top consider every terrible pun you sure did this is dustin's <laughs> bullshit by the way oh, fuck what was i saying <laughs> Well, it's like, you know, that that old adage of like, if you have to ask how expensive it is, you can't afford it, yeah, right? Like, yeah. so th- these are th- these are meals for people who have so much money that it doesn't matter what it costs. Yeah. So it's going to be more than twelve fifty a head, I feel like. I, I mean, as our great philosopher Fabulous once said, just throw it in the bag. <laughs> sure. So, of course. Don't even look at the tag. <laughs> yeah, I just, I love that Ray Fiennes calls Tyler out for mansplaining again mm-hmm. to fucking Anya Taylor-Joy. These I, are the same scallops we saw earlier. Yeah, the, the whole movie, I'm like, oh, I'm going to hate this guy, ain't I? And uh-huh. it took very little time for that to happen. You should hate him by the time he utters the word mouthfeel. That's sure. true. That's true. But, no, but the, the stand up and cheer moment for me is when uh, Anya Taylor Joy finds out that he knew about all this months in advance. Mm-hmm. She climbs over the table and smacks the shit out of him. Oh, that <laughs> felt good. I mean, way before <laughs> that, the first moment where I'm like, okay, I love this character. I love, I, I love Margot is when he meant he's so impressed that this chef knew his name Mm -hmm. and she goes i noticed you didn't ask his that's true i love that and oh my god when he snaps at her later on to get her attention she goes did you just fucking snap at me i I said (laughs) that the same time she i was like did he just fucking snap at Uh (laughs) me 
I love her. I, I love her. No, and then, I thought Ashley was going to reach into the television and strangle him. <laughs> well, and, and the fact that at that point, you don't know what their relationship is. You just mm-hmm. think it's like a, a couple, right? Yes. Like, yeah. And then when she's like, Tyler, you need to apologize to me right now. And he doesn't. I'm like, oh, my God, this guy sucks. <laughs> and apparently in the original script, they were a married couple. Yeah. I like this better. Which is which is interesting. I Yeah, I agree. Oh, this is so much better. Yeah. Well, it, it ties her into this, this whole idea of people who just take and losing your passion for your you know your your vocation you know it's uh it's it's starting to make me think a kind of a, a little bit about like nope right sure. of like you know the spectacle of things versus like the soul that goes into making them and everything like yeah. i i do i i love i mean we'll get there when we get there but the cheeseburger scene is so fucking good yeah and man it's so well I done. Love it's so well done. yeah yeah absolutely <laughs> i did note though chef He's got some real confidence in these other chefs in the kitchen because mm-hmm. I don't see him taste anything once. Uh, no, he does. Does he? he tastes, at the very beginning. Oh. Yeah, he tastes like a gravy or something yeah. while that Michael Buble looking motherfucker like stands over his shoulder. Oh, I must have missed that because like the, he doesn't do any of the plating that I saw other than the cheeseburger. And I'm like, this guy's not tasting anything. Right. No, there's a great moment where he's like tasting the emulsion. And I think it's Jeremy who he kills himself later. He's like watching very apprehensively, but he's sort of out of out of focus behind him mm. it's a great shot okay i must have missed that then again it layers and layers i think i think this is a movie that definitely layers like a cheeseburger like a cheeseburger <laughs> <laughs> i think this is a movie that that really rewards repeat viewings there's also because as someone again who does not appreciate fine dining sure when when you know tyler's spouting off about how great this guy is he wants to suck him off so badly and then Andrew Taylor <laughs> that was Joyce a weird says, line right where he's just like oh, i want to choke on his dick oh what's for dessert i really hope it's chef oh uh, <laughs> <laughs> but no, when she says, Jesus Christ, when she says there are some rules you should follow, like uh, giving food to people at a restaurant, mm-hmm. I was like, thank you. Yes. Thank you so much. No, this is, that's 100% me in that situation. Yeah, because she's like, don't eat tonight. I want you to taste and save. And I'm like, I want to eat. So <laughs> I, I, I'm going to blow up her spot here, but Ashley went to go see Sleep No More in New York, mm-hmm. like early or last year. And is that a sequel to Faith No More? No, it's that, it's <laughs> that like immersive, uh, what? is it um it was that immersive uh like Macbeth performance that they do where uh, they like it takes like three hours and you go into different rooms and you get split up from the audience and sometimes but sounds she, insufferable you know, and that was the thing she kept saying she's like I saw it twice and only one time did I see the ending and the fact that there is a play where if you go the wrong way you don't get to see how it ends is fucking stupid I expect to see a show when I see a play yeah like, oh Overthinking things like that is it's a real thin line that you sure. come across between like actual great art and yeah, just just a nothing sandwich by the time you're done with it. Absolutely. And and yeah, and, and if someone served me a quote unquote bread platter that oh my just God. had a couple of dots of sauce, I would lose my mind. I, I, I gotta be honest, I kind of thought it was oh, fucking awesome. Oh, it's brilliant. <laughs> it's so funny. It was so funny. Where he's literally like, it's for the common man, which is not you. Yeah, and then the, the, he's donating uh, the, the bread that would go to them to like a food bank or something. I thought that was really fucking funny. Yes. <laughs> I, I I agree as someone in that moment who just had to eat a rock beforehand or whatever, right. and then and now there, there's no bread on the bread plate. I would be like, all right, this is getting too fucking far. But We're then eating the ocean, the next meal is the chicken. Sure. So at least you're getting some food at that point. The chicken looks great. The chicken looked amazing. So for a movie about food, mm-hmm. and then this may just be her accent slipping through. I do not like the way Anya Taylor Joy says feud. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The fe- I would like some feud. Yeah. No, I, I I love that she also as Tyler's again for like the thousandth time trying to mansplain to her mm-hmm. and she says I am perfectly capable of deciding when I eat and what and yeah. I'm like oh I love her I love her so much I love it <laughs> or actually I think that's when Chef comes over and he's like you're not eating anything yes yeah and she's like well there's nothing to eat she's like I'm not hungry yeah and <laughs> they all freak out about the tortillas but like honestly it's my fucking dream to have my face on a tortilla you know <laughs> what I'm saying it's also like who cares you're about to eat it it's gonna be it's gonna be gone like that's <laughs> you like you know you've made it when your face is on a fucking tortilla the single best line delivery in this movie for me is when Hong Chow says... It's tortillas. They are tortillas. <laughs> tortilla es delicioso. Yeah, and then he's like, no, I can understand that, but what is it? She goes, it's tortillas. <laughs> yep. It's so good. And Richard goes, what does he say? He's like, oh, they're, they're taco things for the tacos. Yeah. <laughs> But I like I, I, Chef, uh, you know, as he's delivering each of these these plates and he's giving a story about him. Mm-hmm. This story that opens up a little bit of his past about like, oh, my dad 
came home drunk, started beating my mom. Sure. I stabbed him in the thigh with a pair of scissors. And in the immediate cut to the tiny little scissors being placed with the chicken. Yes. So good. That's where you can do the art in the food, right? And yes. I can understand where you're coming from and I can appreciate it. Like, And you take us through like this emotional experience yeah. and it's a little bit theatrical. Yeah. And I, I like this idea that he he's so accustomed to not making an impression. Mm-hmm. They don't remember anything that he he becomes an unreliable narrator. Yeah. He changes where he's from. Like he changes where he grew up a couple of times. The second time I think he says he grew up in Botswana. <laughs> <laughs> the first time he says he grew up in Iowa. I love that. I love this, this idea that he's just like, look, you're here for the show, but you're not actually here for it. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Because all these people could not care. Sure. Like, Tyler's only one that theoretically could appreciate all this. Uh-huh. And even he is like just in, doing it for all the wrong reasons. You know what I mean? He's there for he's there to be seen getting it yeah. he doesn't necessarily get it the clout yeah yeah he's there for the clout uh-huh. yep so then we get on to the mess oh yeah which i i don't want to tap pat myself on the back too hard but i i kind of saw this coming like as soon as a, like, the sheet comes out yeah i'm like oh this dude's dead like <laughs> yeah. i thought i didn't know it was gonna be a gun but i was like oh this dude's dead before the end of this and mm-hmm. i i really i i don't know i really thought this was interesting yeah. like and the, the fact that everyone's like the, the food critics trying to convince herself no this is theater this is exactly what like I, i'm used to this yes and then the guy getting his finger cut off, man. Oof. Like, it's just really, it's really crazy. Like, this is where the movie changes. And, and one of my favorite menu breakdowns in the movie uh-huh. is, is when it shows the mess and it says, R.I.P. Jeremy Lawton. Uh-huh. And he <laughs> shouts, eat. And they all comply. Yeah. Like, they're scared. And like, it, this is, it's so good. Uh-huh. This this might be the worst, like, plate to eat. Because bone marrow, I don't Ugh, know, man. Yeah. I don't think, I don't, I can't get behind it. I don't think. Not a marrow guy? I, I, I like George A. Romero, but I, I don't think I would like bone marrow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was the thing? It's not bad. Uh, I've never I, I had it. I knew you would have tried to. I knew you would have tried it. I, God, I could have put money on that. Oh, here's a good question. <laughs> What's like the like the most adventurous thing you guys have ever eaten? But <laughs> just some a- a- yes. <laughs> <laughs> spoken like a true millennial. <laughs> hmm. I'm not very adventurous. I'll, I'll admit when it comes to to trying new foods. Uh-huh. Yeah, no, that that wasn't a question for you, DC. <laughs> Hot chicken. <laughs> Hot chicken. There you go. I, I, I'll tell you the weirdest thing that I've eaten, unbeknownst to me. Okay. Um, it's not even that crazy, but I remember as a kid, um, spicy nacho Dorito. <laughs> mm. my, my mom offered me something. It was like like it looked like a spread on a cracker or something. I ate it. I'm like that's kind of weird but all right and she told me it was goose liver afterwards okay. oh sure like a pate yeah i was like not a fan <laughs> but that's probably the most adventurous i think i've ever gotten with food if i'm gonna be honest uh yeah i'll have some i'll have a haggis Ooh, um, I've had a, I've oh, some, some, uh, <laughs> it's so wild to me how much food in europe is just like we added blood to a thing you already like yeah yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. boy yeah. i i mean as terrible as it is for us i will say at least america has options for food because like <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I watch like 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 Anthony Bourdain go overseas and stuff. Uh-huh. And Anthony, how many different kinds of beans can you eat today? <laughs> I don't know, man. Everything at, like north of like Germany, I'm like, I don't know what you guys are eating. I I can't get behind it. Like, <laughs> it's all terrible fish and cabbage, and I'm uh-huh. like, God. Oh no, thanks. I like fish and cabbage. I don't. It's see what all the- terrible fish and cabbage. Yeah. You really don't know literally anything about food. Nope. <laughs> nope. I told you I don't. I told you I don't. I don't. This is like listening to me describe the Super Bowl. It it, it would be Tyler in this movie when he has to make the lamb. That would be me. I'd be like, I don't know. Throw some shit in the pan. That's my favorite <laughs> scene in the movie. It's the it's the most satisfying scene of the whole fucking movie. It is. God, oh my god, watching watching him dice the fucking shallot. <laughs> Stresses me out so goddamn much. Uh, <laughs> it's a fucking shallot. It's not hard to chop. Well, it's it's a, he's using a new chopping technique that a <laughs> chef has been woefully ignorant of before. A fucking apparently, <laughs> like that, like bro, like you can't put the leek and the shallot in the pan at the same time. They're not gonna cook at the same. And like, bro, garlic. Put a little garlic in there. Yeah, I saw no real seasoning at all in this pan. <laughs> and and just butter, like that shit's gonna burn. Yeah, <laughs> immediately. I will say, I, I I'm not so far beyond that I can't cook a meal at home, but I have to follow a recipe. So mm-hmm. like, I love a brown butter sauce. Yeah, but, like that's not it. Yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. So DC brown butter sauce uh-huh. is when you brown the butter. Oh, you don't got it, burn got it. it. Okay, yeah, but you brown it. Okay. So uh, this movie became the most dangerous. Have you ever mi- had a fish that wasn't like a tilapia? Yeah, <laughs> no, I, I rarely eat tilapia. I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm more of a cod kind of guy. So another white fish. Yeah, I like Have white fish. Have you ever had 
salmon. Yeah, I like salmon. I like salmon a lot. Okay, but actually, one of my go-to, not my go-to meals, but but one that Priscilla makes is mm-hmm. uh, salmon with avocado and steamed rice. It's really good. All right. Yeah, that's not funny, but <laughs> the widest meal of all time. Yeah, I was. It <laughs> is. It's like a, it's not a struggle meal, but it is like uh, if we're on a budget, you know, sure. get some fillets of salmon from the local butcher. Sure. If we're on a budget, yeah. we buy salmon. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, because we can get salmon, and that like one fillet could feed both of us, sure. and like it's pretty cheap for. And then the kids just kind of starve, get whatever drops on the floor. Well, I have an autistic son. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you, his his, his palate is not that refined. Oh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> the boy's eating hot dogs and pizza like he's going out of control you know he likes what he likes what he likes that that totally makes sense yeah avocado is the most adventurous thing dc's ever eaten. <laughs> <laughs> it's green but it's creamy i don't look man i got i got the palate of a, of a six-year-old i'm sure. sorry i can't help it i've tried tyler <laughs> is unfazed by jeremy killing himself mm-hmm. and i i swear he's eating yes yeah. you don't see it in the it doesn't pop up in the subtitles but you can hear him in the background saying is there like more food coming or uh-huh. what? like uh-huh. <laughs> at one point he's like when he's eating the uh bread sauces or whatever mm-hmm. uh-huh. just it's a little like line that you really you can't hear it but if you have subtitles on you see it uh-huh. and it's just he's like oh, embalm me in this yes oh. <laughs> Jesus oh. fuck, dude God. and they've got like these little they're like ice cream taste spoons yep. yeah yep i love it i also love the sommelier becoming more and more becoming uh, more american yep. more yeah. Amer- yeah. yes well, more american as it goes on but also he just loses his accent uh-huh. more unintelligible mm-hmm. by like the third chorus he's like this one has a little bit of barnyard funk uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> his little dance that that little that little shoulder uh uh, pop and then when Ray Fiennes waggles his head when he says Taco, Taco Tuesday. Tuesday. Mm. <laughs> oh, apparently that was an improvised <laughs> line too. Oh, yeah, I love apparently that. Apparently that was improv. Yeah. The Taco Tuesday bit. Right, because the director let everybody have like two takes, yeah. right? Like one for safety, one for improv, yeah. which I, I love. Yeah, yeah. you get interesting little tidbits out of characters like that when you give them some freedom. Well, you get, I mean, you can tell there's so much of Johnny Legs just like riffing oh, and then yeah. all, of the, all of the finance bros are clear like having a fun time like talking over each other yeah <laughs> oh well and johnny legs said he based his, perf- his character as an actor off of steven seagal because he said he was <laughs> the biggest piece of shit he's ever met so he was like that makes sense i love that that's amazing guys if you ever have a chance to look up there's like a super cut of it online don't watch the whole episode it's not worth it mm-hmm. but of steven seagal hosting saturday night live oh uh, everyone says he was the worst uh host yes. everyone says that yeah lauren michaels has said he's the worst celebrity they've ever had on the show al franken said that yeah. uh, there's so many comedians that have said uh, i think even david spade said that too yeah that he was the worst holy shit yeah. he's like he's not committing to anything yeah. he's he seems angry to be there but also like they're lucky to have him yep. it is the weirdest like imagine he, being a, the, a worse host than trump like imagine, <laughs> just yeah. imagine no, Jesus. D- steven seagal is hate fucking that audience uh, comedy uh-huh. for like an hour uh-huh. <laughs> comedy huh okay that's what we're calling it yeah. all right every every <laughs> single pitch he made w- a- a- apparently ended with well can i just beat him up yeah. like that <laughs> was all of his sketch pitches yep yeah, if you if you haven't uh, had a chance, check out Tom Segura's whole bit about Steven Seagal because it is worth worth the time. Oh, I'll have to check that out. It is great. Um, <laughs> so yeah, this movie becomes a dangerous game real quick. Yes, and I w- I kind of wish this had a little more stakes here. Mm. Like I-, I don't need them to kill the people they catch, but like well, they I think there was some stake on like the mess uh, oh, of course. Fair. Fair enough. Consider every pun. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, I wish they'd like, I don't know, like break a leg or something. Like they just catch them. Well, they cut someone's fucking finger off and a guy shoots himself in the head. That's true, but I meant like this dangerous <laughs> game part because there's no stakes to it. Like as soon as they get caught, they just drag them back. Sure. There's not like, you know. Well, and it is interesting to me that he does say, like, you probably could have gotten away if you tried harder. Yeah. And I don't know that that's true. Yeah. Is that true? Well, it doesn't seem like it. Th- I mean, there's no boat there. I mean, we didn't see him try. Yeah. That's true. Oh, no, they do get there they they get to the shore and there's a little like paddle boat but they don't get it out in time so i i do think that moment when when arturo castro just starts kicking at the window and it won't break is like 
that's like for me the moment when my stomach finally drops yeah. like at this point the blood has been shed and but that's the moment where i feel like the the room is at its lowest dude him trying to break that window so fucking funny though. Yeah. it is it's so good and it's it, the, the, there's one thing about this movie that is a little bit odd which is like character like how how the characters in this situation react to things because mm-hmm. like I don't know, man. If if this was me and I just found out I can't leave, some guy just blew his brains out, another guy got his finger cut off. Right. And the chef is telling me we're all going to die tonight. Uh-huh. No one tries to go for chef. Right. Like, no one tries. I mean, I know he's got a cult behind him, but like, I don't know. And through this whole thing, they've got Lillian constantly telling them, no, this is all part of the show. Yeah. She goes so far as to say, Ted, I think this whole thing is for our benefit. Yep. yep. Which is just like uh, the totally missing his point, uh-huh. but also proving it at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love their tortillas, which are all the re- the restaurants that close after <laughs> she reviewed them. Yeah. She shut them down. Ugh. Yeah. And speaking of Ted, him being the last one to get caught and he uh-huh. gets a little dessert, the little cream friche dessert. <laughs> that's that's great. Yeah. Love that. Love that. Good joke. And then I don't remember what it was in relation to. I think I think it's when Tyler speaks up and then Chef is like, hey, you know, we're going to let you cook in here. Mm-hmm. And his mom finally speaks up and she says, Mr. Handsome Boy. It got a good laugh yes. out of me. Really funny. <laughs> oh, it's so good. And then Chef putting this coat on him and treating him like a kindergartner, like writing his name. Oh. Uh, on the coat and sharpie oh my god this is his <laughs> he he gets so scampy for like five minutes like and not shrimp scampy it becomes gordon ramsay yes he <laughs> absorb every pun <laughs> <laughs> he makes tyler tell margo the truth mm-hmm. he goes uh you're not like the others you know that you know what a paco jet is you <laughs> tasted the bergamot like, it's so funny and he he puts a period at the end of tyler's oh name on the jacket yep. when he says i'll personalize it for you i kind of wish he did like a backwards e oh or my something. god like i really <laughs> shallots for the great foodie god. this is a new oh. dicing method of which we have been ignorant oh so good <laughs> yeah he's like oh it's so inventive lamb with shallots oh it leaks oh oh you think it's done maybe you, you want to jam it into the paco jet <laughs> uh, i mean lamb is a hard thing to cook but that thing you just glancing at it sure oh that that lamb is so oh, undercooked. undercooked as fuck you and priscilla tried to recreate hell's kitchen menu didn't you like what? a couple seasons ago didn't she like make uh risotto and stuff she, yeah ris- sh- i mean as someone who's ever made risotto it is difficult to get it right the first time it's, but it's very difficult yeah, yeah yeah priscilla ain't making no fucking risotto <laughs> i would love to make like like risotto and some scallops sure and uh you know i i just haven't had the chance to but i would like to try let's get that right <laughs> <laughs> i am a donkey chef that's my favorite <laughs> gordon ramsay is um oh, yeah? where he's like the, the the scallops are cooked perfectly. Let's get that right. Yeah. Like he always says, let's get that right. Uh-huh. Family style. <laughs> and then, yeah, we get uh, Tyler's bullshit, which, <laughs> man, maybe the best joke in the movie. That's the, the, yeah, the fucking payoff of those titles with that is so good. In my favorite line of dialogue, I think, in the movie, you are why the mystery has been drained from our art. Oof. Oof, yeah, absolutely. Like, what a death sentence to Tyler. Yes. And then we get told, like, you know, Johnny Legs is like, why why are we all here? Like, why us specifically? Oh, yeah. And he mentions that he saw a movie that Johnny Legs did the one day he had off. Calling Dr. Sunshine. And the one day he had off in months, and he's like, I hated it. He's like, well, (laughs) I mean, I didn't make the movie. I just started. I didn't direct it. You represent what happens when an artist loses his purpose. Yeah, and then Johnny Legs is like, you know know what? He's right. That's fair. (laughs) He's just like, fuck, you got me. And, And I'm just thinking, like, can you imagine seeing a movie so bad uh-huh. that you decide you want to kill the main actor in it? And yes, I'm like, I watched 365 Days. I wrote that down. I wrote that down. I was like, oh, yeah, we watched 365 Days. Oh, simpatico. I love it. Do you think anyone listens to our show and is like, yep, I'm going to kill him? I, I hope so. Yeah. If not, we're not doing our job right. That's so right. That's, that's right. Hey, listen, you're going to come for the king. You better pucker up and kiss the ring. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I've always said that, actually. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's on my uh, epitaph. Yeah, <laughs> that's a little succession quote for you, DC, that you haven't made made it to yet. Not but yet. Trust me, 
It's the best scene in the entire fucking show. <laughs> I love that last season it was Dustin watches The Leftovers, mm-hmm. and in the back half of this season it's Dustin watches Succession. Mm-hmm. Just HBO's dramas just being shoved my way. Yeah, and I'm fucking here for sure. it. Sure. Yeah. Dustin watches Miss Fletcher next season. <laughs> The episode I watched today was almost, uh, I, 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 it was maybe the worst thing I've ever seen human beings do. Oh, but, wait, which, ep- wait, uh, which episode was it? B- bore on the floor. Yes. If you know, if you remember that. I was like, I cannot in good, I was like, I almost stopped watching. I was like, this is just despicable. It's kind of funny that you watch that episode and this movie on the same day. Uh-huh. <laughs> very, very similar. Yeah, absolutely. We uh we get a new meme format right here too a new template oh boy because fucking Ray finds quotes MLK and then it just cuts to Johnny Legs hey, did he just quote MLK yeah <laughs> yep and Ar- Arturo <laughs> Arturo Castro sadly saying yeah he did like that's we got to use that from now on when like po- politicians on MLK Day try to use it and Ugh. like it's for coming from the worst people like oh did he just fucking quote MLK I, I want to just I, I'm with Tucker Carlson I know next year when you quote him I got this whole lock <laughs> so don't even worry about God, that one's just fucking locked and loaded Ugh. I love Johnny Legs is so fucking funny in this movie. Yeah, I mean, good. like he's like. Then we we fly me to Africa. I say do do a couple minutes on why racism isn't cool. Uh-huh. Uh, roll credits, <laughs> and I get an Emmy. Yeah, <laughs> I'm moving into the presenter phase of my career. You know, uh-huh. oh man, when they him and his assistant when they they're back and forth when they're confessing things to one another, yes. and he says, "I put in a bad word for you at Sony." She goes, "I know you CC'd, CC'd me on me the, the email." email. Oh, uh, and she goes, "I've I've been stealing." from you he goes i, I know, know. <laughs> i love her amy carrero as so felicity good. she's she's really great in this and i love that her character like she's planning on leaving him she's not representing him anymore mm-hmm. or she's not working with him anymore but she's still like go on pitch me the show let's yeah. make sure you're ready for this oh. uh I, I just really like that about her oh and th- that pitch you just gave and she responds with you're gonna pitch that to three different studios <laughs> <laughs> right. dude one of the best bits though is when chef's like where did you go to school brown student loans <laughs> no i'm sorry you have to die yeah you're dying tonight yeah <laughs> you're dying <laughs> it's so good she's great so but then we get the coast guard bit mm-hmm. and man this was a good little like turn because oh my gosh anya taylor joy the whole movie chef is trying to give her an out yes right like yep. give her subtly a way to leave because she's not a part of this plan she doesn't belong there he asked her to come work in the kitchen he says that uh elsa fucked up by not bringing this barrel in we turns, oh yeah uh-huh. turns out later that he never mentioned the barrel intentionally mm-hmm. they have a fight she kills elsa and she brings the barrel back but before she does she goes into chef's private quarters which look like it's a recreation of the kitchen like yeah, he never leaves kitchen, yes. like i i love that detail yeah, and she sees like some old like newspaper article about him that he used to be like a work at a burger joint, just flipping burgers. He appears to have a estranged wife and child. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, she finds a radio in his room, radios for help. <laughs> this Coast Guard comes in. And before I realized this was a bit, when Johnny Legs gives, you know, because the Coast Guard recognizes him and says, hey, can I have your autograph? <laughs> sure. And he, he signs the little note and it says, help us. Yeah. The Coast Guard immediately pulls his gun out. I was like, well, this is fucking amateur hour. Sure. Like, this is the worst fucking thing you could do in this moment. But then. Well, and it also, it ratchets up the tension by having the, the, the Coast Guard guy say, you know, my wife and I love you and calling dr sunshine Uh i'm like oh (laughs) chef's gonna like stab him in the throat before he leaves the room yeah (laughs) and then uh he pulls his gun out it looks like he's about to shoot someone then he lights a candle because it's a a lighter gun right man oh it's funny the utter despair of this reveal Mm -hmm. like every like the the air is sucked out of the room and it's made hilarious by the sommelier in the background going oh and like just clapping (laughs) (laughs) you can hear everyone just just sigh yeah. Like, oh, man. Oof. But yeah, this is also where uh, Anya Taylor-Joy figures her way out. Mm-hmm. And this is maybe the best part of the movie because she does the clap. Yes. She pulls the Uno reverse card on it. <laughs> she does. <laughs> she pulls the clap 
And then she, you know, she's like, chef, you're, you're a chef. The whole one thing you're supposed to do is feed me. And the worst part is I'm still fucking hungry. Mm-hmm. And man, I love this character so much because this is so smart and plays into exactly what chef needs, right? Yeah. Because the whole movie she's talking about, there's this food is like just for display. Like this is not food to feed people with. And she says, you you don't make food with love. And yeah. maybe his best line of the movie, which is that's absurd. Everything we make, the first ingredient is love. And he's got blood. Blood on himself. Like, uh-huh. <laughs> but she, she, the thing that really wounds him is you've taken the joy out of eating. Yes. Which is a play on what he said to Tyler, right? You took yep. the mystery out. And sure. she's like, well, she calls back into the whole reason he wanted to get into food, right? Mm-hmm. She says, I want you to make me a cheeseburger. And man, the, the little glimmer in his eye when she says that, like just sucking him right back into like the whole reason he got into this. I love that he refers to it as being just like, quote, the cheap one your parents could barely afford. Oh, I and love that is it. Such a, that is such a true thing, right? Yes, like you grow yes. up like going to get fast food is a treat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, like it's not it's not something you know i grew i grew up with uh parents who worked really fucking hard to make ends meet and a lot of the time they barely could so anytime it was like yeah we're going to mcdonald's it was legitimately like unfucking believable that that was happening exactly and i i I love that she appeals to that part of him where it's not about class anymore it's about these pleasures yeah it's it's not a battle of wits it's not a physical battle it's reminding him what got him into this in the first place and, like in the happiness that a good cheeseburger can bring you yeah because you you see us like he doesn't smile this whole movie yeah. and in that picture when he's a burger flipper he's as happy as could be yeah and pushing in on his face with his like slight smile and the 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 the, the simple happiness on his face while he's cooking it mm-hmm. like and he cooks it himself it's the first time you've seen him yeah. put his hands to work in this movie yeah uh-huh. he 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 gets the joy back uh, of making food for people. And like, I thought he was making two cheeseburgers. And when I realized he was making a double, I was like, this guy, this is a class act right here. Yeah, oh, he's going all out. Yeah. I love that they basically took the I can hash cheeseburger meme and turned <laughs> into a pretty decent <laughs> horror flick. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, this is this is definitely getting nominated for best adapted screenplay based on a meme. Oh, 100%. <laughs> this cheeseburger looked amazing. Mm-hmm. And I love, she takes the tiniest bite and delivers maybe the most ironic line of the movie. Oh, yeah. My <laughs> eyes are big bigger than my stomach. I'm like, girl, you have the biggest eyes in the business. Yeah. <laughs> I wrote, no shit, you're an anime character. <laughs> <laughs> She asked for a to-go box, and man, I just wrote down, God damn it, Ray Fiennes is so fucking good. because He's great. You see him consider everything. You see a life worth of love, loss, and yep. joy taken and given back. You uh-huh. see everything mm-hmm. in this little glimmer he gets, and it just it blows my mind how subtle this whole thing is yep. and how incredible he makes that moment. And the fact that it's just like everyone is just watching this happen happened and the best part too the button on this is he says i want she says i want a cheeseburger how much will it be he says Mm -hmm. 9.95 and i'll give you fries and she pays with a ten dollar bill and i love that she's the only one with cash yes oh yeah absolutely i i gotta say one thing though love that character but like i hate a person that doesn't tip oh Oh. nope nope i i thought that too but Chef says earlier on, all prices have gratuity included. Built in. Oh, yep. it, does, that, girl. does that include that burger, though? That's off menu. We don't know. Mm. Well, he did say he doesn't do substitutions, but he never said anything about uh, secret secret menus. She is literally a substitution, though. Yes. That is true. Yeah. That's why he doesn't do substitutions. That's good. She, yeah, she wasn't part of, and, and the menu includes everyone in the room. Yeah. So she was not part of the menu. Yeah, yeah. yeah good call. Good call. I, I guess that's a question too I have for you guys. How do you feel about gratuity being built in? <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, as someone who I, I pride myself on tipping well, yeah, yeah, it doesn't really bother me when someone does it. Yeah. I'll, I'll probably still put a little something on top as well. Um, I, I I do as well. I tip like a fucking king. Yeah, yeah. I, I, even if I have bad service, I always tip at least fifteen. Yeah, and if it's great service, twenty five to thirty. But like, I guess I'll say this: like, it's not really built in. But the fact that I can go to like, I don't know like Moe's or Chipotle or something now uh-huh. and 
it pops up before I pay. Do you want to leave a tip? And I'm like, I don't know if it's bad yet. Uh, yeah, I was like, <laughs> I was like, I, I, cause tipping for me is a exceptional service. And B, if you're living off tips, like sure. if you're one of those waiters in those States where you only get paid like $2 an hour and you live off the tips, yeah. tips all day for you. If you're making at least minimum wage and uh, not to say minimum wage is sufficient, right? But I don't know. It's weird to now go to like just uh, any restaurant. If I go to McDonald's, like, do you want a tip? I'm like, for what? (laughs) No, no, I don't. Uh, I'm not. I don't think I'm as bad as Steve Buscemi at Reservoir Dogs. But I'm like, come. uh, There's a little. Maybe McDonald's could take a pay cut and then pay their employees better. (laughs) I understand having like the the misgivings, but I still end up doing it anyway. Like I I just I can't I can't leave that shit blank. (laughs) That's fair. I guess (laughs) just can't do it. That's fair. I guess I'm just an asshole. I'll deal with that. That's fine. Oh, this also just I don't know why this didn't come up earlier, but uh, Emma Stone was originally cast as. As the lead, as Margot, as slash Aaron, and who was the director? Who was the director? Did you have Alexander like a- Payne? That's right. This was, that would have been a way worse movie. You think so? Yeah. Interesting. So, yeah. Are, are you not an Emma Stone fan, or no? Or I, not I, a- I, Payne is hit or miss for me. I, I don't know that. if you could have done this. Okay. Yeah, I don't have a problem with Emma Stone at all. Just but Alexander Payne. I don't know. Ever since downsizing, I've been kind of retroactively looking at his <laughs> filmography. Yeah. And I'm like, man. Sure. Although I will, I will say, I think the the downsizing connection is why we have. Hong Chow in this movie. Uh, oh, maybe. You yeah, you might be right. I, th- I believe she was cast when he was still attached because, yeah, she was in downsizing as well. Well, I read that the reason that character's name was Elsa is they were going to play on like Swedish and Norwegian, like that whole. And it was supposed to be an actress that was from there to play off of that. I heard that the character was named Elsa because she was supposed to be played by the wickedly talented <laughs> Adele Dazim. <laughs> <laughs> Bravo. Bravo. I have to rewatch that clip once every couple weeks. <laughs> Absorb every pun. <laughs> Mally, this is the end of the menu. We've reached the final course. Do you want to uh, wrap it up for us? Tell us what happens at the end here. Yeah. So she gets her burger to go and her gift bag. Oh, yeah. Which is great. That's yeah. right. Yeah. I want that gift bag so bad. Mm-hmm. And she goes and learns how to drive a boat in under 30 seconds. Uh-huh. A miracle. <laughs> the regular James Bond right there. Mm-hmm. And then everyone else stays for the final course, which is a dessert. Uh-huh. And it's a take on a s'more. <laughs> and our slash we want plates is fucking fuming <laughs> right now. Uh-huh. Yeah, they pour all the sauces and everything on the table, which apparently is a real thing that mm-hmm. I don't know the chef's name, but Oh no, that I've been to a restaurant where they serve me my food on the fucking table. No fucking thank you. Yeah. No the fuck out of here. Yeah, it not for me. Uh, um, so your s'more sauce is going to taste like cleaning products and the worst chocolate ever. <laughs> well, no, they don't. It, it's just not straight up on. The, like, it's not like in the fucking movie. Like, they put a brand new. Like, oh, it's like on paper. Okay. Yeah, they put like something over the table and serve it on that. Gotcha. Okay. Even still. And, uh, and you know what I love is to lick paper. Uh-huh. It's still fucking dumb. Yeah. yeah. And then we see, I don't, I still have the question, is the mom drunk or dead at this point? I don't know, because we just get a shot of her. I think she's just drunk. <laughs> on the table. Yeah. yeah, I think she's just hammered. Yeah, and everyone gets the, sh- the comfiest looking marshmallow shirts. Mm-hmm. And the little, uh, and little, hats. little little chocolate caps. Uh-huh. And then my man reaches into the fucking like stove, grabs the hot coals, mm-hmm. and just bam. Just gives the old Emerald Lagasse, just bang, yeah. <laughs> right on the floor, and that shit explodes. Burns them all alive. Yeah, the island the whole island blows up. And then we get the last little menu card, which is like the dessert ingredients, and it's like chocolate, mm-hmm. marshmallows, restaurant, mm-hmm. staff, customers. Yes. Uh-huh. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Margo just takes another bite of her burger and wipes her mouth with the menu, yeah, which is great. Nice little bit. Perfect. And yeah, credits roll, baby. So Chef makes a comment earlier on in the movie where he says, he talks about hands Mm -hmm. and like how his hands have become so atrophied with fucking just like, uh, he could lift a cast iron pan and not feel the heat. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh my God. And I know there's, there are people that could do that, but geez, a cast iron pan you can pick up and not, oh, oh, (laughs) sounds terrible. If if anyone's ever made the mistake of grabbing a cast iron pan while it's hot, they know how big of a fucking fucking deal that is yep i have you don't have a hand no more <laughs> like, you're, just, you're just done <laughs> gone uh yeah but no margo gives gives a chef the one last thing he needed mm-hmm. and 
that kind of played in perfectly with her because she was able to get out. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, yeah, Margot survives and escapes, but like, what a what a way to like end. Like, I, I don't know. She doesn't seem too bothered by it. That's one of my few qualms with the movie. I mean, she wasn't fucking emotionally attached to any of those motherfuckers. I guess. Sure, but, but that's like a dozen people were just murdered and you're just kind of like, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's, the, the, the wiping the mouth with the menu is it's, it's, it's such a good button, it but is, it is it like, is. Uh, I don't care. I mean, that's that's what we're doing on the show, right? The right. whole island blows up and there's just nothing. Like, nobody cares. Although I do, I I, I don't know, it, it those last moments are really fantastic. Mm-hmm. The, like, the, the way they lay out all the, the ingredients, it looks exquisite. Mm-hmm. Like, and, and I love the moment where, I forgot her, Anne, Judith Light's character, mm-hmm. when she says, thank you yeah like she's finally being set free like they finally all kind of understand why he's doing this like maybe the stockholm syndrome is set in late yeah. well we also kind of glossed over her husband yes and the fact that he hired uh margaret who should we actually have been calling the wrong name yeah Aaron, Aaron that's right hired her yeah. because he looked like his dead daughter yes yeah he said he wanted to jerk off in front of her and she tells him that he's a good man yeah Yeah. he's a good person yeah i gotta say i uh Ah. yeah it's tough Uh (laughs) (laughs) what's interesting to me though is there's there's just that one moment where she finally says my name's aaron this is where i'm actually from Mm -hmm. and nobody gives a shit nope and that's kind of that it kind of encapsulates all of these characters yeah so maybe that's why she's fine with letting him go. Yeah. But it is, it's just, it's very, I don't know. I, I, I feel like this character is so dialed into like the, the like human experience, yeah. so to speak. Yeah. That like w- the fact that she doesn't have really any reaction to the island exploding is kind of odd to me. Yeah. I do hope she made Tyler pay up for him. Oh, yes. yeah. I mean, everyone's kind of resigned to their fate at the end. They're like, nobody's really, uh, uh, contesting what's about to happen, which <laughs> right. I do find interesting. They all kind of like, and I mean, you could play this game if you want to, but they all kind of represent the seven deadly sins, and yeah. they're all kind of like making amends for it at the end there. Sure, but it reminded me very much of like the ending of Ready or Not, uh-huh. where like everyone is dead, mm. and then you've got Samara Weaving just sitting there, just completely like apathetic to the whole situation. By the time the credits start rolling, God, I love that movie. That's a great movie. I love that movie so much. It's a great movie. <laughs> but yeah, it's that. Uh, that's the menu is there anything we forgot to talk about or that you guys uh had notes for still um that was about it yeah. i love all the, the the effort that went into making the older newspapers with with Slowick on it mm. like uh there's one shot where he straight up looks like a young gordon ramsay he's got yeah. the same haircut and everything and i wrote down that he his, his i wrote down that he looks like fucking tom riddle in the hamburger <laughs> always photo uh-huh. <laughs> no, I, I, this movie uh it looks great mm-hmm. it's directed amazingly mm-hmm. it's edited to perfection like i think the whole they they really took the care like they had a a, a chef consultant mm-hmm. and uh an interior designer to like help them design the restaurant and well, the s'mores thing is a play on something that chef actually does yeah. Right. And uh, the restaurant itself, the Hawthorne, is actually based off a real restaurant. Mm-hmm. I can't remember what the name of it is now. And but the logo for Hawthorne looks like the Hell's Kitchen logo a little bit. A little, a little bit, bit. yep. Yeah. And I did read that the, the chef that was the consultant on the movie actually offered Hong Chao a job at one of her restaurants afterwards because of how well she played that part. Wow. So this movie could have easily been just really not like someone didn't do their homework, right? Mm-hmm. This could easily have been a parody of fine dining and things like that. But I think the little things of like all the background extras that are the chefs, the, the sous chefs mm-hmm. are actually creating plates. Like if you watch, they are actually creating things. They're not just moving shit around. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not just background work. Yeah. It's not like the dude sweeping the dock in that one Bond film. Yeah. In Quantum of Solace. <laughs> yes. It's not that. With the broom not even touching the dock. Yes. Yep. Yes. One of my favorite extras of all time. Oh my God. So good. Absolutely. And, and, and the, you know, the little graphics that pop up to tell you what all the meals are and everything like they they really took the extra step i feel yes, like to make yeah. this feel authentic yeah and at no point did i feel like i was being like played with in terms of that aspect you know what i mean oh yeah so i really do appreciate that i think that's what mark mylod brought to this the screenplay and like in the direction of it definitely all right well is there anything else before we get into bit part prop cop all the other stuff i'm so excited for bit part all right well let's start <laughs> with prop cop uh uh-huh. Fine. <laughs> and for new listeners of the show, Prop Cup is where we look at all the uh yes, chef. <laughs> Prop Cup is where we look at all the props in the movie, the menu, and we each take one for ourselves. Mally, I'll give you first dibs since this is your movie. Hell what prop yeah. do you want from the menu? I mean 
I really want the kitchen, but <laughs> realistically, I know that won't fit in my apartment. Mm-hmm. So instead, I'm going to go with the rope that Tyler hangs himself with, okay. and I will fucking frame it. Amazing. I think it's, a t- it, I thought it was his tie, wasn't it? Like the tie that he had on? I don't care what it is. Fair I enough. I want it. Fair enough. Nathan, what about you? Uh, I want the silver door Ooh. with like the angel and heart design on it. Yeah. Uh, going to put it on your bathroom? No, just <laughs> let that lead into my office. <laughs> is that not your bathroom? <laughs> oh, you're right. Yeah, there's so many good options, but I'm going to go with the fucking spice wall yeah. that's in the kitchen because G- you don't know what half of those are. <laughs> exactly why I wanted. I want to learn. Mm-hmm. I want to learn. Like fucking DC's out here eating cookies. Like, I'm going to put some sumac on it. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I, I just eat chunks of fondant. Don't even worry about it. I, I was just talking. So it's uh, so it's pronounced fondant, but I also say fondant because of Cake Boss. There you go. <laughs> that, maybe that's what it is. Fondant. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Cake Boss. Cake Boss. All right. Who wants to be who with bit parts? So this is where we look at all the extras in the movie and we recast them as ourselves, uh-huh. at, at least one each. So uh, who wants to go first? Who wants to, their bit part? I mean, realistically, we should all just be like random sous chefs. Yeah. Sure. But I'm going to go with Doug Varick. Oh, oh, yeah. We didn't even talk about him yeah. getting lowered into the water. Yeah. The guy in the angel wings. Yes. Drown me, baby. Let's go. So that's that's uh, the, the investor, the angel investor, as they call him, uh-huh. uh, the one who gave chef the money it, i still don't know how i feel about the movies doing this and they did this in glass on you too but referencing covid mm-hmm. like oh he kept you open during the pandemic and everything right like, i was fine with it during glass onion because it kind of played into the narrative yeah mm-hmm. it doesn't add anything yeah to movie. it's one line i'm like oh i don't need that yeah i don't need that either see it was distracting to me in glass onion because the movie posits an idea that uh ed norton has cured covid yeah <laughs> well, see, i thought that's that was true. fucking hilarious yeah. okay <laughs> <laughs> like that whole that whole little bit with Ethan Hawke was fucking amazing. I mean, look, I, I will never protest having more Ethan Hawke in a movie. Sure. I, I don't I wonder if Janelle Monet was actually the one that cured COVID in that movie. I believe it. Yeah. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> the the angel invest yeah, when he when they finally drown him in the in the ocean and uh Ray Fine says, that's the sound of me being free Yeah, after he stops screaming. So that, that's really good. That's good. I want to be the reason Ray Fine's is free. <laughs> okay. All right. Nathan, what about you? So at the beginning of the movie, when they're doing their tour, they like wave at the guy who's harvesting the scallops yeah. and he like fist pumps into the air. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I want to be that guy. All right. I want to be, th- we talked about him earlier, but I want to be the maitre d' that oh, just sure. slowly losing it throughout the movie with the wine and everything. <laughs> the wine sommelier. Barnyard funk. Yeah, I like that. All right. Well, we, we finally arrived, folks. We're here at the silver linings for the menu. Who wants to go first? I've got kind of a, I, I suppose, sort of an obvious one, okay. but um, Slowick felt joy again right at the end. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, found purpose again. And weirdly enough, I am I'm rooting for him by the end of the <laughs> a movie. little bit. A little bit, yeah. Mally, what about you? Tyler's girlfriend got the fuck out. Yeah. Oh sure. Dodge that bullet, right? Jesus. <laughs> the luckiest character is the one we don't see. Uh-huh. Also, I have another one that's more real world. Sure. Okay. If you own a burger place next to a movie theater, whoo, your your business was good <laughs> after this showing let out. Maybe so. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I went with the the, the, the real obvious one, which is that uh, Anya Taylor Joy escaped, but with a caveat that she maybe got to enjoy the world's greatest cheeseburger ever. Yeah, mm. so that's good. Yeah, it's not bad. And if you want to have uh, an anti silver lining, those three tech bros probably don't have to worry about their white collar crime that they committed anymore <laughs> since they're dead now. <laughs> well, true. So. Well, what we like to do on the show, if you're new, is uh, every time we cover a movie for the week, we also like to give you an alternative, a movie that you watch as a double feature with the menu, something to alleviate things, because some of these movies are pretty dour. Mm -hmm. This one, maybe not as much, but again, it it qualifies for the show, so we have to do it. I'm going to give you guys my pick-me-up movie alternative right here. I'm going to go with a movie I saw recently that is another isolated location movie where no one can leave, Uh and it's just filled with tension until you uh, unravel the mystery. Mm. And I'm going to go with a movie I really enjoyed, Knock at the Cabin. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Eh. I know you didn't really care for it, Melly, but I think it's M. Night's best movie in a long time. So, two thumbs up. Thorough recommend. Melly, what about you? Don't watch that fucking movie. Um, <laughs> just rewatch this. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm not even kidding. It's so good on repeat viewings. Okay. Like, pick pick up on all the double meanings and shit at the beginning, like uh-huh. all the stuff between Margo and Tyler. Uh, that's nice. true. I don't know that we've done that before. I, I gotta say, you're breaking ground here at the end of the season. Yeah. I appreciate I respect. it. It's better than watching fucking Knock at the Cabin. This is, <laughs> this is you revitalizing uh, the show, much <laughs> like Chef. Uh-huh. Nathan, what about you? Uh, yeah, I'd recommend another movie where John Leguizamo tries to break into a new form of show business. Mm-hmm. I'd watch Tu Wong Fu, Thanks for Everything, Julie Newmar. Uh, what, that title always gets me. Really thought you were going with Super Mario Bros. <laughs> oh, sure. Uh, <laughs> did any of you guys see uh, Violent Night with him in it? I haven't yet. I've heard it's really fun. It's all right. It's, I mean, it's it's not great, but it's he's, he's... It's no knock at the cabin, I'm sure. No, not absolutely not, but he's having a good time in that movie. Uh-huh. It's, it's worth watching at least once, I would say. Sweet. Well, do we recommend The Menu? Is it going on our Yelp review? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I really dug this. I am glad I had an opportunity to watch it a second time for the show. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I, th- I think it's a movie that, that definitely rewards repeat viewings. Right on, Mally. Uh, sadly, I gotta say, no, I do not recommend Knock at the Cabin. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough. I, uh... I recommend it. I feel like this movie is a mix of movies. Like if you like Midsommar, Mm -hmm. if you like Ready or Not, and uh, there's a little bit of Parasite in this movie too, Mm -hmm. which- Oh, for sure. Yeah. I think Mark Mylod even said that he designed some of the shots to be reminiscent of Parasite as well. And I I definitely got that feeling. Mm -hmm. If you like those movies, if you like a slow burn, if you like unraveling a mystery, and uh, maybe if you just enjoy fine dining, you'll probably enjoy this. I I thoroughly had a good time with this movie. It's a breezy watch. Yeah. Like for as like heavy as it gets, like it's only a hundred minutes yeah. like you'll you'll uh, uh, it's such <laughs> it's so rare to find a prestige movie like this that's under two hours absolutely and it's not that violent i would say yes there are things like a guy getting his finger chopped off and everything but mm-hmm. it's not sensationalized like it's not like focusing on the gore of it or anything like that for the most part right it's not like torture porny no not at all that's just taco tuesday baby <laughs> <laughs> i think this would repeat uh you know reward repeat viewings absolutely so mm-hmm. can't wait to watch it again well, if you've got feedback for the menu, you can email us at the Silver Linings Playlist at gmail.com. If you have you know notes about the show or suggestions, you can also do that there. Or you can DM us on Instagram, Twitter, or even on Reddit at reddit.com slash r slash Silver Linings Playlist. Uh-huh. And if you haven't already, follow us on uh, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok where we post clips from the show and some behind the scenes stuff occasionally. And if you haven't already, we ask that you rate and review the show. And I'm going to emphasize that because that really does help other people find us yeah. just as much as you telling people to watch our sh- to to listen to our show mm-hmm. if you take the three to ten seconds to do that that would truly make our day we'd really appreciate that so next week fellas yeah is the season six finale boy howdy of the silver linings playlist about fucking time we uh we already know what we're gonna do mm-hmm. and boy this episode is gonna be fucking wild i have a feeling <laughs> so I put this to to the group last week that I wanted each of us to have a clue for next week's episode. So sure. why don't we start right now? And this will be a treat for the audience because three clues, I feel like you should get it by that point. Uh-huh. So Nathan, I'm going to start with you. What's sure. your clue for next week's episode? Well, I keep trying to see the clue that I've written down on my computer, but it's like something is drinking the electricity and controlling my machines. Mm, okay. Mally, what's your clue? It's all all about the musical cues. Okay. Yes, yes it is. All right. <laughs> I would say my clue is that you can never really appreciate the value of a good chair. I agree. Toss. Chair toss. Sorry. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I had to keep scrolling down through my notes. Chair toss. Um, yeah, it's it's going to be a fun, fun time. Yeah. Because we've, we've talked about this movie before on the show, but never in to the extent. So. I've talked about this movie on one of my other podcasts. Oh. So, like, that's how much I love this movie that I'm just ready to do it again. A fourth clue. Uh-huh. Ooh, a late a late reveal. Much, much like the movie we're doing next week, there's a late reveal. A substitution? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, fellas, uh, that's the menu. That's it for this week. Mm -hmm. Uh, We'll see you next week for the season finale. Is there anything else we want to say before we get out of here? Well, the beauty in this podcast lies in its ephemeral nature. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So let's wrap this one up. All right. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Well, uh, rest in peace, Oatmeal. And as always, we gel. Plating in five. Love you all. (laughs) (laughs) I knew one of us had to do it. Excelsior. Excelsior. Excelsior!
Jesus Christ, that was a long one. Uh, anyway, if you're still here, thanks for listening. And remember, you can always check out our back catalog for over 100 episodes of the show. Like, subscribe, and leave feedback if you want. And tune in next week for another one. Laters.